But in other words, when we look at it from the biblical point of view, we are saying you are a work in progress. You are a work in progress. Amen. God is not yet through with you. He is still working on you. Amen. If we look at uh, these particular companies that make vehicles, you will find that the vehicle, a pigeon that was made in the 1960s, is different from the one in the 1970s, different from the one in the 80s, in the 90s, and even in the year 2000. Amen. Because they are not satisfied with the make. They always want to make it better and better. Praise the Lord. And even if we look at the architectural, architectural work that we have out here, if you look at the houses that were built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and the ones that we are having today, are they the same? They are totally different. Because people want things that are better. Praise the Lord. If the earthly manufacturers always look at making things better, what about our heavenly father? He wants us to be better than the way we were yesterday. Amen. And that's why he keeps on working in us. This particular service that you normally come in every Wednesday, you come here so that the Lord may work in you. You are not satisfied with the way you are. If you are satisfied, you would not be here. Praise the Lord. But because you want to be better than the way you are, you keep on coming to the house of the Lord. And that's why you want to have fellowship with the brethren. On Sunday, in your cell group, in your home, every other time, you want to be better. And I'm saying that you are a work in progress. God is not yet through with you. You are a work in progress. I just want you to reflect back in January. Is there somebody who made this particular prayer that God work in me? Work in me. Did somebody make such a prayer? Many of us made prayers that God, I'm here, but I want to move to another job. Father, I want to build a house. God, I want my income to increase. We had different prayers before the Lord, resolutions. But when the Lord is looking unto us, he is saying in his words in Matthew 6, 33, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Amen. His kingdom and his righteousness. Every other thing that we need will be added unto us. In this particular kingdom, one of the things that we have been told is that men ought to pray and do not faint. Praise the Lord. Men ought to pray and do not faint. That is one thing that any born again Christian must desire in their lives. That how is my prayer life? God, work in my prayer life. I'm not doing it enough. I want you to work in it. I want to be more prayerful. Just the way you are, Jehovah Lord. If you look at the life of Jesus, he was never satisfied with who he was. He would always go back to the Father to seek his face even after doing miracles. Praise the Lord. Today, if somebody told you that your messages have been blessing me every other time you speak, I am blessed. You know, the enemy might say, Make you think that you have reached up there and you don't need God. Praise the Lord. But if we look at the life of Jesus, even after working a miracle, he would still go to a solitary.
it a replace to seek the face of the Father. Bwana sifiwe. And if we want to follow him, then we will tell him that we are also a work in progress. Work in us. Work in our prayer life. That even if I prayed for a whole week, I will not tire of praying. I will still seek your face. Praise the Lord. I will not say that I did it yesterday. Today I have a break. I must take some off because I did it. We are a work in progress. And that's why Paul was saying that I may know him. That I may know him. None of us in this church has written even one book. I don't know. One book. Can I say maybe a chapter in the Bible? We have not written even one. But Paul had written three quarters of the epistles or the letters in the New Testament. Three quarters written by this man by the name Paul. And even after writing three quarters, if you look at those books, he taught everything that we are teaching today. But Paul is still saying that I may know him. He knew that he was work in progress. God was not yet through with him. By the fact that the Lord had used him, he was not yet through with him. He wanted God to still work in him. He wanted to know more about this God. He wanted to know him in a deeper way. Buona sifiwe. Paul is even saying that I can speak in tongues more than all of you. But still, he wanted to know God. What about us? Us. When it comes to the kingdom issues, how much have we done? And that's why today, one of the things that we will be praying for is that God work in us. Work in us. Just make us, make me to be the kind of a person that you want me to be. You know, there are things that are in us that the Lord must work on and we also must work on them. Let me just read something in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Paul is saying in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Praise the Lord. That continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Meaning that accepting Jesus as your personal savior is not the end of the road. It is only the beginning. After accepting him, then you now have to pray that God work in me. There are things in me that I don't like. Even when you are seated here, there are things that you do and you are born again and you don't like it. Those are the things that you can work out. And you're told, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That salvation that you keep on proclaiming, work it out. That people out here will see Christ in you. When they see you, they don't just see Millicent, but they see Christ. Beyond Millicent, there is Christ. There are things that we need to work on. You might come from a family where people were always full of anger. And you have carried your anger even to the house of the Lord. That even in your cell group, everybody knows, oh, so and so. When you hear such a thing being mentioned, you must work. Don't say that is me. That's the way I was brought up. That is in our family. 
You belong to another family. You belong to the family of Christ. It is not about where you came from, but it's about where you are in right now. Bwana sifiwe. I'm saying you are a work in progress. And being a work in progress, God also expects you to work out your salvation. Work it out. Work it out to a point that you will be somebody that everybody will be able to attest that this sister, this brother is a loving person. He loves people irrespective of who they are. He does not love you because of what you have. He loves you because the love of Christ has been shed in his life. Praise the Lord. Here in the house of God, there are people who love only those who love them. Or they love those who can give them something. That if they come to you and they know, at the end of the day, hey, atatoka na kitu, they will love you. But if they know that they'll get nothing from you, they have no business with you. Work out your salvation. This is the greatest commandment. That love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with everything in you. Love God. But number two, love your neighbor. And even your enemies. This is now working out your salvation. Loving even those people who hate you. People who have no report, any good report about you, that you can love them. You are working out your salvation. All that you want to do is that you want to be a witness of Christ. Not only by preaching, but by your character. By the salvation that you have worked out. That when you go ministering, they'll say, yes, this person who is ministering, even their character can preach to you. But you can be so fiery for God, but your character is totally different. I'm saying, you can be in your place of work. But because you know who you are, you know who you are, you will be different. When everybody is dragging, dragging themselves, because they are saying some of us are not employed by the pencil, they are dragging themselves. But you who has worked out your salvation and you want people to see Christ, you will do the right thing. Paul is saying that you obeyed even in my absence. That even when the boss is not seeing you, nobody is supervising you, you still do the right thing. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Let us work out this salvation. This is the greatest thing the greatest gift that all of us got from God. The gift of salvation. And don't take it as something yam chezo. You need to work it out. That everybody will be able to see Christ. And the Bible goes on to say, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. You have your part to do, and God has his part to, to do. And that's why we come here every Wednesday. We come here on Sundays. We read our Bibles. Why are we doing all these things? Because we want God also to work in us. As you give him all your life and your heart and your everything, you are giving it to him that he may work in you. Because you don't want to remain where you are. Could be a singer like Irene. 
After leaving the service, everybody's telling you, Irene, you blessed us. I enjoyed the way you were worshiping. But deep down in your heart, your prayer should be, God, continue working in me. One as if you. You are not yet through with me. I need you more than ever. I need you in my life. Whatever area God has placed you in, I pray that he may continue working in you. That you will become a better you. A better you. Don't live on the past glory. I did it well last year. I did it well last week. I did it well yesterday. Your prayer is, should be God. Continue working in me. Even the things that you know how to do so well, this still should be your prayer. God, work in me. Buona sifiwe. One time I was reading, I've just seen Victor and I've remembered a testimony of a certain mechanic who was saying that uh, there was a certain machine that uh, got damaged and it wasn't working for some time. Different experts were called to work on it. It was in a factory. They did their best. They tried their best. The machine could not work. But a man of God was called. He wasn't such an expert, but he knew God. That was his only secret, that he knew God. So when he was going there, he was not going there because of what he had learned and the knowledge that he had acquired. But he went there seeking the face of God and he told God this, that Father, even as I go touching that machine, I am praying that the Holy Spirit will reveal to me where the problem is. Buona si fio. And when he reached that particular factory, as he looked at the machine, the Holy Spirit showed him the exact place to go to. And as he touched that particular button, the whole machine started working. Buona si fio. I am saying we are a work in progress. And we can tell God continue working in us. I might be good here, but I know with you, I'm the best. Amen. I need you, I need you to work in me. I'm not satisfied in the way I'm doing things. I need you to work in me. Even if you are a teacher, you are teaching and your mean score is 60. Don't be satisfied that I am at 60, others are at 50. You who is a work in progress will tell God I could be in 60, but I know of a God who can take me to 70 and take me to 80. Amen. Because he is not through with you. We are work in progress. And that's why I am praying that in this remaining quarter of the year, these three months, may the Lord work in us. Work in us. That even if I have pastored for a year or two, I don't have the enough experience to pastor. May the Lord work in me. Work in me that he'll make me to be a better person. That he'll be able to give me grace with the people. That he will be able to put the right words in my mouth. Because dealing with people is not easy. It is not easy. And even leading people is not easy. But when the Lord is on your side, who can be against you? Amen. I just want us to read something in the book of Psalms. Chapter 1, from verse 1. The 
Bible says in Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. Amen. When you want the Lord to work in you. One of the things that the psalmist is telling us, that such a person will not be found walking in the counsel of the wicked. The counsel of the people who keep on misadvising you. They are always cheating you and telling you the wrong direction to take. Like for the women, they'll tell you, Hi, Miss Wesi Kaliwa. Mi, Miss Wesi Kaliwa. We ume Kaliwa kama? Chapati. Sindio? Mi, Miss Wesi Kaliwa. And as they are talking to you, you will see some sense in it. That ni me Kaliwa sana. Ni me Kaliwa. But the psalmist is saying that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Those ones who are always misadvising. Who are always giving you advices that are contrary to the word of God. That when you want to forgive, they'll tell you, ah, 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 that one was too painful. Can't forgive. Can't forgive such. That was too painful. Whatever the person did to you, that is too much. You cannot forgive. The counsel of the what? Wicked. And so sometimes you come here praying, crying before the Lord. And the Bible says that when you come to pray, what should you do? Forgive. What do you do? Forgive first. He does not tell you just pray and leave. If you are holding anything to anybody, the prerequisite is forgive. But the counsel of the wicked will tell you about how painful it is that this one cannot be forgiven. And so if you are a work in progress, you will not be found in the counsel of the wicked. Or stand in the ways of sinners. That where sinners are discussing issues, issues that are ungodly, you will not be found among them. And if you are there, then you will be telling them about Christ. Or you are told who sit in the seat of the mockers. You can't be in the house of the Lord. But you are still found in the seat of the mockers. Those ones who mock even the people who are born again. But when they look at the born again people, they talk so ill about them. And you are also part and parcel of them. If you are a work in progress, if you want to become a better you, you cannot sit in the seat of mockers. People who are mocking God. People who are mocking the word of God. People who are mocking other believers. You are not going to be found in the seat of those people. And the Bible goes on to say, but his delight. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. Anybody who is a work in progress, his delight will be in the law of the Lord. His delight will be in the word of God. And the Bible continues to say, and he meditates there day and night. Want to become a better you. You want the Lord to work in you. Then his laws are the ones that you should delight in. His laws are the ones that you should be meditating upon day and night. 
that when you are faced with a situation, the constitution that will guide you will not be the constitution of this country, but this book of the law. You'll be asking yourself, what is it saying? What is in the book? What is in the constitution? When somebody is telling you you cannot forgive, what is our constitution saying? When you're telling you you cannot love your enemies, what is the constitution telling you? What is the word of God telling you? And that's why today I'm praying that God will work in us. There are things that we need to work on and there are things that God will work in our lives when we allow him and we pour our hearts to him. It goes on to say, such a person will be like a tree planted by the streams of water. Will be like a tree when your delight is in the law of the Lord and you meditate on it day and night and you know that you are a work in progress. Then the Bible says you will be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Amen. Anybody who is a work in progress, who wants to become a better person? The Bible says that as long as you are meditating on the word that is making you to be a better person, you will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. And the Bible says that this particular tree produces its fruit in season. And its leaves do not wither. Then it finishes by saying, whatever he does, prospers. And that's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. I am praying that in the remaining quarter of the year, May the kingdom business be our number one business. And the kingdom business is seeking God. Seeking God with all your heart. Seeking God, pouring your heart and telling him, Father, if there are things in me that you did not plant, uproot them, Lord. If there are things in me, O oh God, that are not glorifying your name, O oh Father, uproot them, O oh Master. If there are things in me that are making your kingdom to be ashamed, O oh Father, work in me, O oh Jehovah Lord. If I've been lazy in your house, that even when people are being called to come and pray, Father, I am too busy for you, forgive me, O oh God. Buona sifiwe. We want God to work in us. That as we finish the year in these three remaining months, that God will work in us, that people will be able to see Christ in us. Buona sifiwe. If people have just been seeing you, that should be your prayer in these three months. That Father, may they see Christ in me. Less of me and more of you. Less of me and more of you. May I be able to know you. May I seek to know you like Paul, who said, I just want to know you. I want to know you. In these three months, we want to know him. We have not known him enough. We want him to make us better and better. We don't want to remain in one place. We don't want to stagnate. Because when he makes us better, then we will prosper in all areas. Many times we want to prosper, but we don't want Christ to work in us. When anything in your life is being touched, you feel so bad about it. You feel like this is me. I am real. I am not pretending. If Christ is living in you, it's not about you. It is about him. If it is about you, then he's not living in you. 
But if he's living in you, then it will be more about him and less about you. And that's why I'm saying, church, we want to know him. And we want him to work in us. We want him to work in our prayer life. I am praying that you will not be busy for Christ. You will not be busy. Busy for Christ. That you will not say that I am too tired to worship him. I am too tired to pray. I am too tired to read his word. When you want him to work in you, then you will allow him to take the preeminence in your life. You will allow him to take the center stage in your life. You will make him to be the number one in your life. That as you are planning everything, you put him to be number one. And that's what he told his disciples. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. Those resolutions that you made in January. The many things that you wanted God to do for you. You wanted God to lift you from one area to another. He's still reminding you, seek ye first my kingdom. And his righteousness. And all these things that you are looking for will be added unto you. Amen. I am praying that even right now, as we stand up, we want to go before the Father. And our prayer will be, work in us. Make me to be a better person. Make me to be a better Christian. God, if there is anything in me, that Jehovah Lord, you did not plant in me, I am praying, oh Father, that you will pluck it out. You will remove it from my life. I don't want to remain the same ear in, ear out. I don't want to remain in the same position. I want to move to another level. And you can only move in another level as you work in me. One as if you were.